Secretary to the Government of the Federation, SGF Boss Mustafa, has admitted that the principles and protocols of coronavirus lockdown were unintentionally violated during the bearer rights of Abba Kiari, the late Chief of Staff to President Mohamed Buhari. He also stated that the COVID-19 pandemic has exposed some neglected basic infrastructure in Nigeria and that the country will not remain the same again once the pandemic is over. Still with us to have a conversation on this is security expert Dixon Osagie. Thank you, Dixon, for staying with us. Thank you. Thank you. And joining us live in the studio via phone is legal practitioner Taiwo Akinlami. Thank you, Mr. Taiwo, for joining us. Thank you very much for having me. It's a pleasure. Members of the Presidential Tax Force, there's a PTF on COVID-19, have admitted to unintentional violation of the principles and protocols of the coronavirus lockdown during the bare rights of Abba Kiari, that's the late chief of staff to President Mahmoud Buhari. How valid is your claim? Mr. Tai, we'll just go to you first. Okay, well, thank you very much for having me. Um, one, it's commendable that um, Mr. Boss Mustafa, the services of the federal government, has uh, come out to acknowledge the fact that uh, they, they broke the, all the protocol and all the rules that they made by themselves as to COVID-19 uh, issue. Now, but what I don't understand there is the word unintentional. Um, these things were not committed by robots. Barrier was taking place. They saw the crime or the, the breach continued to the end. At the end of the breach, there was no apology uh, which emanated from the government without the burden of the public. Now, the entire public began to say what happened there was wrong, and it was inimical to public health. Then it took three or four days for the Secretary of the Federal Government during a presidential, during a briefing, that the President Task Force briefing, to admit in person that there was a breach. I think, having agreed that there was a breach, I don't understand the word unintentional. You know, because, because how do you commit, how, was it someone bullies him? Was it that they were dreaming? Was it that they saw themselves in the barrier? Something happened there. Okay, so let's go by the argument of Gaba Chew, Chew, that they didn't invite anybody, that they gathered together in Abuja. And then when they wanted to bury, People showed up, and so they couldn't disperse the people. The barrier had to continue. What do you mean you cannot disperse the people? If it happened in Ojota, in Tabatoba, in Ologuro, in Yonforogi, where the poor are, who to use their guard? Who to disperse the crowd? So what are we talking about? What I'm just concerned about is the health of people who is affected by what they have done. What I'm talking about is that we saw the same thing in Lagos State. And the Lagos State government, who is belongs to the same party in power, rose up, rose up in vengeance. The person involved was arrested, was arrested, tried, while the corona was going on, when, the, when there was lockdown, and sentenced. So I think it's not enough for leadership must be by example. So it's not enough for Mr. Boss Mustafa to admit it, that they were they, 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 they breached the rule, where do we go from here? Now, his words, it's called uh, unintentional violation of protocol at Abakiari's internment. Now, doesn't it come of as gross um, behavior, misbehavior from those who set the law? You see, uh, as uh, Taiwo rightly said, uh, I really don't understand uh, why uh, Boss Mustafa would come and say uh, the action was unintentional. This is our center of gravity, where laws drop down and split within the states. I am so amazed, I'm so pained to see a nation that sets laws that nobody should come and claim cops that belongs to uh, COVID-19 cops. Barriers are suspended, and at the same time, you organize a beautiful barrier uh, thousands of people uh, flown into that place, and you say it was unintentional. That is a high spate of inhuman behavior. For me, I, I, I just felt that 
we, we, we are not ready. We're not ready to drive this country forward. Because when we talk about leadership by example, we expected the federal government to exhibit an exemplary conduct in the management of this barrier. Now, in a barrier, for example, I've attended many barriers. When I was in the military, for example, when we lost a soldier in the battlefield, for example, we organized a barrier party. There's a barrier party. We will receive a briefing. This barrier is taking place in XYZ location. When you get there, this is what I want to say of you. At the end of the barrier, we'll be debriefed. Now, who was in charge of this barrier? Who was the barrier party commander? Who was in charge of these guys that went to bury uh, Abakari? If there is no body or if there is no barrier party uh, uh, commander or if there is no uh, uh, bearing party, I think that is just like a, 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 an unprofessional conduct from the government. The apology is not acceptable because we're talking about human lives here. If that uh, 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 unprofessional conduct had resulted to the loss of any Nigerian life, can it bring back the human lives? So we should stop all this kind of behavior from the federal might. All right, Tawa Kim, I mean, now, these principles for emphasis, and I'm going to stress, these principles for emphasis include the guidance, um, the guidance provided on mass gatherings, social distancing, personal hygiene, and restriction of movement. That singular action was in complete defiance to these principles. What are yeah. the implications of this? Well, um, unfortunately, I think the National Assembly, you know, in Lagos State, there was a law. Uh, which which the which the Lagos State House of Assembly passed uh, in response to the COVID nineteen pandemic. I don't think such law already exists in uh, at the federal level. So what we're talking about is a moral is a moral to a very large extent. It is the fact that number one, the Minister for Information and Culture, uh, uh, Mr. Lai Mohammed, Mohammed yeah, said. COVID-19 courses will not be released. They cannot be released because of the virtue of the fact that it can spread. How, why, was, why was the, the corpse of the, of, the, of the former secretary, uh, uh, chief of staff, why was he released? And if he was going to be released, under what circumstances was he supposed to be released? Nobody died in Lagos. You, 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 you gathered people. You took the court from Lagos all the way to Abuja. Why was he not buried in Lagos? Why are, there, why, why are people's lives supposed to be exposed? So what I think is this. So legally speaking, we may not be able to avoid these people in terms of specifics. But when it comes to the fact that they swore to the Constitution, that is those who appointed them, swore to the Constitution that the welfare and the security of the people shall be the primary aim of government. So in COVID-19 era, what has become the primary welfare of government, which is the welfare and the security of the people? So when we talk about welfare, you made some rules. On the basis of these rules, there's social distancing, there's a rule on how to manage, NCDC released a document on how to manage manage a COVID-19 corpse. All of these were thrown into the dustbin because someone who is in power died. Now, please note, I sympathize with the family of the one who departed. I sympathize with the government for the person that they lost. This is not about the person they lost because it was not the person that they lost that planned his own barrier. It was the people that are around that plan the barrier. So when it comes to the constitution, the welfare and the security of the people shall be the problem of government. The government has not lived up to that constitutional provision and those who handle that matter should honorably resign. Because, because if they do not, if it's going to end by just ordinary apology, what is the deterrence? That if another person of who is high up there dies tomorrow, the same thing will not be done and will be apologizing. PPE were seen by a vid in a video being dropped on the streets. Do we know how many people have been affected? Have, have we done the contact tracing of those who attended that, that barrier? Now look, AMBC in Ed in Lagos, and because there was an information that there, was, there were some people who came from abroad to be part of that pro program. 
not that they were tested test positive for COVID-19. Everybody who was in AMVC was asked to go into self-isolation. They were treated and all of that. So it's not enough for the Secretary of the Federal Government to apologize. It is enough for us to know what steps have been taken. Who is who is being punished? All right, Taiwo. Okay, <laughs> just just hold, hold your thoughts there, Taiwo. Um, you, you're fuming already, I can tell. Now, what brings a question to mind? Shouldn't there be an arrest and prosecution of these people by this time who violated the, the set protocols of the NCDC when it comes to um, restraint, um, social distancing, and not not being not being seen? And the way we saw them doing during the internment, shouldn't we be having arrests and prosecution right now going on? You see, uh, when it comes to management of disruptive behavior, there are various causes, emotional causes, uh, uh, injury, ailment. Now, we understand that somebody passes on and we sympathize with the family of their back areas. People flew in, flew into the burial area to see the last cops, the last burial of this great guy. We classify them as emotional mourners. Are you with me? Mm. I don't have problem with them. Now, the problem I have is with the government. The government set the rules and regulation. NCDC uh, instructions were violated. What the government should have done is to have condoned off that environment, are you with me, before the arrival of the cops. And immediately the cops arrive, only the barrier, the, 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 the barrier parties should be allowed in with the, uh, with the imam or whoever is going to carry out the prayer activities. And this reminded me of what happened to Funke Akindele in the, uh, some few weeks back. She was uh, arrested and uh, 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 charged to court, and a, a verdict was uh, vested on her. For me, the government should apologize to Funke Akindele with immediate effect and reverse that judgment and let's start again. Because whatever is good for, for, for me should be good for you. Whatever is bad for me should be bad for you. Let's not believe that uh, the law is meant for, for, the, for, the, for the elites, for the, for the non-elites. The law is meant for each and every one of us. So government must set themselves as an example. All right. Tayo Akinlami, do you think there should be arrest and prosecution for those who violated the protocols and guidelines of the NCDC at the funeral? Well, well as I said before, uh, what law are we going to charge them under? I'm not aware that I'm not aware that at the federal level, that has been backed up by the law, the same way it was done in Lagos State. You know, Lagos State has the law. Are you getting what I'm saying? Passed by the National House of Assembly of Lagos State in response to the pandemic. But I'm not sure that law exists uh, at the federal level. So what I'm saying is that, so when you are right and you want to prosecute, there has to be a law uh, that has been breached. There has to be a crime that has been committed. And there has to be punishment that has been prescribed by the law for such, for such behavior. But that does not exist. That's why I say that the people, there must be a level of punishment. And I think, honorably, everybody who participated in that barrier should resign so, or should be fired. Uh, Tawo, ta ta if, if I get you correctly, are, are you saying the cessation order and lockdown, as said by Mr. President, is not, is not lawful enough to prosecute these people? Well, you know, the, the lockdown, so, so there, are two, there are two laws. There was a cessation law that there was a lockdown. lockdown. Yes. And quarantine law. There's the quarantine act. Are you getting it? Yes. Then there's the power of the president to declare a state of emergency under the, under the, under the, uh, under the constitution. So now, so what I'm saying is that when you look at the quarantine act, it does not speak directly to lockdown. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. It does not speak directly to lockdown. If you take anybody before the court, there has to be clear charges. Which law are the person? So if you ask somebody to go for, it's supposed to be quarantined now. Are you getting it? So, and the person refuses to. You can be talking about that. So it's not straightforward like that. And that is why I don't want to go by the way of of the black and white of the law and again when you look at it the people you are talking about if they are responsible for making the law they are responsible for breaking it they are also responsible for adjudicating on it are you get what i'm saying so what needs to happen is to look because and, and on the ground of technicalities you see people arguing and getting away with blue murder but what i think can be done it's 
there has to be a level of deterrence. And that's why I'm saying that there has to be uh, uh, a kind of uh, uh, punishment from the commander-in-chief of the armed forces or the people involved who have admitted that they were wrong, the garbage shells of this world, the, the secretary of the federal government, boss Mustafa and the rest of them, they should honorably resign. Legal practitioner Tywa Akinlami, thank you for joining us and for your interesting contributions. Thank you very much. Now, what was your path in short in all of this? What would you say at the end of the day? It's, it's a worrisome situation. Like uh, uh, Taiwo was rightly saying that uh, uh, people should be arrested. You see, uh, when it comes to uh, the better it was a ceremony, when you throw a party, people will definitely come. Yeah. Let's look at the better as a, as a party. And uh, the uh, cemetery was not a borderless uh, cemetery. I saw the cemetery. It, is, uh, it, it has uh, access control. You know, when talk of access control, just an egress, an egress, in and out. And uh, we have people that are supposed to be in the access control. Definitely none of those guys, uh, mourners, uh, jumped through the fence. They went through the access control. So government has failed in the management of its access control. Because I expected the federal government of Nigeria, as a lead example, to ensure that before these cops get to the cemetery, all access control mechanisms should be put in place. Who and who are allowed to come in? Every other person can view from afar. Nobody should have come into that place. So as it stands now, Boss Mustafa, I agree with Taiwo. You see in Nigeria, Taiwo says Boss Mustafa should resign. People don't resign in Nigeria, even at the detriment of human life. In foreign place where uh, you know most of us go, if somebody tells you that uh, uh, you, are, you, are, you are a thief, whereas you are not a thief, for deformation of your character alone, without being found guilty, you just honorable resign. Security so. expert, <laughs> Dixon Osage, thank you very much for joining thank us you. on Plus Politics and for your insightful contribution. And thank you for staying with us. We'll take our Plus report now, and when we return, my take. Stay with us. Lagos, the epicenter of the coronavirus in Nigeria, has three isolation centers across the state. But many citizens have neglected the NCDC directive and visited private hospitals for care. Reacting to this violation, the NCDC has shut down five private hospitals temporarily after staff contracted the virus from infected patients. One of the hospitals is St. Nicholas. Plus TV Africa visited its Lagos Island branch, but access was denied. According to a source, the hospital has not been shut down, although a press release is to the contrary. We spoke to an expert who shared more light on why patients choose to visit private hospitals. First of all, there are different categories of patients. Some patients will not even know that they have COVID-19 infection. They might think they just have you know, catar or cold and they now go to their doctors, okay? So that's, that's what one, one effect. They don't know that they have a diagnosis. They go now to their doctors instead of going to isolation center. Now, there are some patients, unfortunately, from the reports we have, they do have COVID-19 symptoms and they've been exposed. And when they come to their doctor, they deny all those symptoms and lie about it and then get admitted into these um, private hospitals that are not prepared to deal with infection. I can tell you that report that we have, a few number of them have been shut down now to decontaminate and put all their staff in quarantine. And as a matter of fact, we have report that some hospitals, nurses got infected, which is very unfortunate. And then this, the third part of it is that some people may think that the Isolation centers are poorly equipped or dirty and not, you know, um, suitable for their level of, you know, um, satisfaction. And then they opt to go to, they start going to private clinics, thereby exposing, you know, those um, facilities. This is very unfortunate. I think we need to rethink the whole idea. Right behind me is the St. Nicholas Hospital, Lagos Island, rumored to have been shut down according to a press release. But as you can see, that is not the case. For Plus TV Africa, Nimi Adekombi. This is my take. It is sad that the lockdown, which had been implemented for a good reason, covering the spread of coronavirus, has now led to the loss of lives and properties. 
Now fellow Nigerians are robbing other Nigerians of their belongings. Some have even been killed. And it's just week four of the lockdown. And with the number of cases rising steadily, there might be another extension of the lockdown. What will happen then? Would we resort to breaking into people's homes to relieve them of their belongings? My call is to Nigerians today. No one in the world today has it easy. COVID-19 has impacted all our lives. Let us be patient. Let us refrain from taking what is not ours and instead given to the needy and less privileged. Let us also stay away from creating panic because according to Ted Turner, if you panic, that's a good way to lose. You have to stay in control. And also on COVID-19 protocols that were broken during the burial of Abba Kiari, I ask, why were the people present at the ceremony not sanctioned? Funke Akindele comes to mind. She was sanctioned. Why not these people? Because they are leaders or because they came to honor a close ally of President Muhammadu Buhari. No one should be above the law regardless of who they are, what they own or who they know. Adhering to the rule of law would help us not only win this fight against coronavirus, but also build a country with a working system. I ever believe that the SGF own police stating the neglect of basic infrastructures in Nigeria is commendable, but it is also a reprimand on the Nigerian government for not being in touch with the reality on ground and being desensitized to the plight of the health sector. As much as I would like to again criticize the government for abandoning these systems, I would rather ask them to take note of the lessons this season has brought out and work on them as soon as possible. We must work together for a greater Nigeria. And that's our show for tonight. We return same time tomorrow. Please practice personal hygiene and stay safe. We will overcome. Have a good night.